Some of the inspiration for today's project came from the Visible Man series of model kits, which used transparent plastic skin over a series of bones and internal organs to show you how anatomy worked, and I thought it'd be cool to do something like this with the vintage Kenner Jabba figure, but I thought recreating this might be a little challenging for me given my lack of sculpting skill and also the fact that I would be using 3D printing, which can make it difficult to get perfectly transparent results like this. That got me to thinking about some art pieces that I had seen a while back by the artist Jason Freeney. He reimagined some traditional toys as if they had internal anatomies, like this Lego minifigure or this Mario figure. And I thought this approach, where you just sort of cut off part of the figure and show what's inside, could work with Java. So I decided to try sculpting on my iPad Pro using Apple Pencil and an app called Nomad Sculpt. It's actually a really powerful app that's not too terribly difficult to use, although I'm still just barely scraping the surface, and uh, it did take me quite a number of hours to figure out how to do some of the things that I wanted to do. So I started out by sculpting Jabba's skull. I took a little inspiration from the Star Wars Excavations line of toys that uh, Uncle Milton released a while back, showing various Star Wars creatures' skulls, but kind of put my own spin on it a bit. Now, I don't have a lot of footage of me actually sculpting this because I wasn't sure if it was going to work and it also took me hours to get to this point. This is my first time doing any kind of organic digital sculpting, so given that I think it turned out relatively well. After I got the skull more or less where I wanted it, I went ahead and tackled the body, which was a lot more difficult. I am not a trained sculptor and I don't know a lot about anatomy, so those two factors together made it a little challenging, but I think it came out fairly well. I referenced a uh, snake's skeleton for much of the tail section, so that's based on a snake skeleton, and then the front, his torso area, is sort of semi-human, but not quite. I just wanted it to look like it could plausibly be a hut skeleton, and you know, for the record, I'm not even really sure that huts should have skeletons at all. They're more like invertebrates to me, but uh, for the purposes of this project, that's what we're going to do. I also added some internal organs that I separately sculpted. So we have some intestines and lungs and bowels and I don't know what all, just, just some vague internal organs. I had imported Desert Octopus's scan of the vintage Kenner Java figure ahead of time, and that allowed me to make sure that the skeleton would sort of fit inside the figure. And... So you can see I move them on top of each other. One nice thing about Nomad Sculpt is that you can select certain objects to be editable or not editable. And what I did in this case was to uh, select the Vintage Jabba figure and mask part of that off. This would be the part that I'm cutting off, basically. After I got the mask the way I wanted it, just selecting the parts that I wanted to cut off. I was able to invert the selected portion so that it would select what I hadn't selected before. Then I used the trim command to get rid of it and open up the hole where I wanted it there. I didn't actually record this process when I did it the first time, so this is me recreating it for you. It won't exactly match the final result you're going to see later, but you get the point. So in order for this to be printable, I had to then close the hole and kind of excavate it back just to reveal the parts of the skeleton and inner organs that I wanted to uh, show. I wasn't positive that this approach was going to work, but with a little fine-tuning and so forth, I was able to get it to uh, a place that I was pretty happy with. I was also able to use the paint features in Nomad Sculpt to get an idea of what this would look like in its finished form, and I was actually pretty impressed with how easy it was to do this. I determined that the entire figure would not fit on the bed of my largest resin 3D printer, so I also took this opportunity to cut the tail off into a separate piece that I would print separately. Finally, I exported the pieces as SDL files that I could take into Cheetubox on my computer for 3D printing on the Elegoo Saturn resin 3D printer. For this, I first of all angled it in what I thought was the best orientation, then hollowed it out, 
This makes it take up less resin when printing by quite a bit, but you do need to include some drainage holes to let the excess resin flow out, so I did that as well. Put a couple on the bottom here. It was difficult actually to find a place where Cheetah Box would allow me to place holes, so that's sort of dictated where I put them here. And finally, I added support materials to allow this to actually print, and I was ready to put it on the printer. This is what it looked like straight off the printer without doing any kind of rinsing with alcohol or removal of the support materials, but I think it printed just about perfectly. After curing the pieces, I found that they were not quite flat where they joined together, so I took some sandpaper and flattened them out just a little bit so that they would sit flush, and after that I was able to glue them together without any real problems. And here we have the cured and assembled figure ready for painting. It's pretty impressive to think that I was able to go from something that I created on my iPad to a physical object I was holding in my hand in a day or two. I did notice that there was one part on the skull here where there's a layer line that you can see, so I took a sanding twig and kind of tried to uh, file that away. Other than that though, I think this printed out really well. After priming this in white, it was time to get painting. But before we do that, I'd like to talk to you about today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes on a wide variety of topics, including art, design, and photography. There are no ads and they're launching new premium classes all the time, so you're sure to find something that interests you. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. I've been trying to step up my Instagram game a bit recently, so I decided to take the course The Complete Guide to Instagram Hashtags, Increasing Hashtag Reach by Ethan Bridge, who has a number of courses about engagement and similar things on Instagram, and his advice about things like how to use hashtags or how to take advantage of the Instagram algorithm is actually pretty useful. The first 1,000 people to click the link in the description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. So give it a try and unleash your creativity. And here is the finished product. And I'll have to say, even though it's not perfect by any means, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out, especially because this was my first time using Nomad Sculpt, my first time doing any kind of organic sculpture uh, digitally. So yeah, turned out pretty well and, you know, looks like a skeleton, I think. Uh, I did add my 
little maker's mark there on the bottom. Part of me wants to try and make a small run of these as custom figures, although I'm not sure if it's realistic. It may be too much work to make very many of these at once, but I'd be curious to know if anyone was interested. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button and ring the notification bell to be notified of future uploads. Today's video was brought to you by Skillshare and my patrons from Patreon, including these Palace VIPs and Angelica Brady. If you'd like to help support the channel for as little as a dollar a month, check out the link in the video description.